Grand Portage Resources Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource indicated and inferred of 860,000 ounces in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is home ownership consultant Ross Kay from the wealthyhomeowner.ca. Welcome back to the show, Ross. And thanks for having me back on, Jim. Ross, today the federal government announced details on the first time home buyer incentive program, calling it a boost to affordability. What did you see in the finally released policy? Well, to be to be honest with you, what we're seeing now is uh, the, it's coming to fruition. What 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 we had talked about you know, when it was first announced. Except the government, for some strange reason, is refusing to tell innocent young home buyers what exactly the program is and what it's going to potentially cost them. Uh, uh, personally, Jim, we think this is a this is a scam by CMHC to earn more money from Canadian home buyers on zero risk. That's how we view this program. This is the exact same methodology that they use with their mortgage default insurance program. Canadians don't lose money. CMHC does not lose money, has not lost money in 50, 40 years with CMHC. It is a huge windfall profit generator for the Canadian government. Since the Liberals have come to power, over $4 billion has been transferred from CMHC profits into um, the uh, federal government. The reason why those profits can be transferred is because the structure of the program would basically have, you would require a global depression before CMHC would, would face any, any losses. This program that they just announced, which by the way, Jim, calling it on face value, I mean the program's name is First Time Home Buyer Incentive. Not first time home buyer plan, not first time home buyer down payment strategy, incentive. It is an inducement that with an undisclosed cost. So when you look at a program, you look at it as if you should be looking at it the same way that a homeowner will interact with their home over their lifetime. So for the sake of the argument, we know that Canadians normally will carry a mortgage for 25 years. We know that historically Canada is going to return around a 4% uh, return on uh, compound annual growth rate on the price of a Canadian home. There will be housing bubbles where people will be, will be uh, drastically financially damaged. And there will be boom cycles where some Canadians grab huge profits, unethically in some cases. But the, the, the long story short is the overall price improvement will be somewhere around 4% on a national level. In places like Toronto or Vancouver, we should expect that appreciate, price appreciation to be even higher. Now, you've got to remember when I'm talking about these price increases, I'm not talking about off of the peak price that was reached at the as the housing bubble was popping in uh, in uh, Canada. I'm talking about the prices when these the, these corrections are fully finished, the deflated prices. So once that deflation has taken place over the next 25 years, you should expect to see a compound annual growth rate of around 4% nationally. If a city like Vancouver probably around 6% a city like Toronto, probably around 5%. That's what you should probably expect. There will be factors that will impact that, like interest rates, but generally that's what you should be looking at. So CMHC has, has decades of housing data. They know how the housing stock is constantly improving, 
and they also know that you know when you raise the water, all the boats in the uh, all the boats in the in the uh, tub rise equally. So they know that housing prices over the long term are are going to increase around four percent nationally. Okay, this program basically means this, Jim, and CMHC and the federal government, and no one has disclosed this is what it means. What CMHC is effectively doing is lending first-time home buyers a mortgage for 25 years with an annual interest rate of 10.25%. And you will have a balloon payment due on that mortgage 25 years from now. All of the interest, all of the interest to get up to that 10.25% annual mortgage rate charge, which is what CMHC is doing here, will be paid 25 years from now in that balloon payment. The reason for that is if you take, we, you have to look at how a housing market works. So let's say for the sake of the argument that housing prices go up 4% a year on a national basis uh, from, from trough uh, to the end of a cycle, okay? Um, so we take that and we take $100,000 or a $10,000 uh, mortgage, which is CMHC is saying, and CMHC is saying that uh, that $10,000, if your house goes up 4% a year over the next 25 years, you are going to owe us a compound annual growth rate of 4% on the price year of on that $10,000. Well, when you put that into a mortgage table, Anyone who was in the business back in the 1980s should have immediately recognized what was going on here because a 10.25% interest rate parallels a 4% house price growth rate. This is old school real estate math. So why didn't the government say, based on historical performance of the Canadian housing market, first-time buyers should be expected to have paid the effective 10.25% per year interest on this loan that we're giving you to buy a home. Why didn't they disclose to everyone that it is an effective mortgage at 10.25% where you make a balloon payment at the end of the 25 years? Why have they framed this as something being so innocent, as a way of you lowering your mortgage payments for 25 years. Well, obviously, the math that supports a lowered mortgage payment probably is predicated on that 25-year gain, expectation of gain, on your property. Well, if you could barely afford a house now, how are you supposed to afford some giant balloon payment at the end of your mortgage? Well, 25 years from now, you'll be more than well enough off to be able to make that balloon payment, okay? And, and, and how much is that? Well, we're looking at, say, so, so for every $100 of, of that they lend you, you're going to have to pay back, I think it was uh, 273 is what the, around $273. So they're going to lend you 100 25 years from now, you got to give them back $273, okay, which, which is referred that is reflective of a standard 4.27% 4, 4. house price gain. I just don't under, understand why the government refuses to tell first-time home buyers the truth. This is no different than the than the uh, mortgage uh, default insurance that people have to pay. First of all, it's branded as something that it's not. It's not mortgage insurance. What it is, it is bank lender insurance. You protect the lender. There is no insurance to your credit score or to you if you default in your mortgage and, and the premium that you've paid, CMHC uh, takes care of the bank. The only people that are helped are the banks, the lenders. That's the only people. It has nothing to do with mortgage, in, uh, mortgage insurance by any means, but they call it high-ratio mortgage insurance. Ross, also 10.25%. That's an outrageous mortgage rate. When what are the commercial rates right now for a mortgage? Three, three you can get three percent for for uh, five years. 
you can get, actually, Jim, right now you can get uh, around 3.08% for 10 years. So, yeah, it, it, it is basically, Jim, the exact same mortgage rates that we used to charge, that, that the banks were charging back when the, the last great housing correction happened. Now, is that a coincidence? So they're charging no, three not. times more than what the commercial rate is. Right, exactly. Holy and then God. they're tell- and then they're telling people this is not a profit maker for CMHC. Well, if if well, this is what's going to happen with this program, so so let's get this recorded here in Howe Street in perpetuity. You are going to see CMHC sell off these securities, these mortgages to institutional lenders. Because when you have something that's expected to return a 10.25% compound annual growth rate, that is unbelievable as an investment opportunity uh, over a long term. Unbelievable. So this is going to be, Jim, exactly the same what they've done with their, mor- with their mortgage-backed securities. They're going to bundle these, these, uh, these up, and they're going to give them to the banks. So it's not only the fact that they're go- they're going to squeeze young first time buyers who are too innocent, or they trust the government, and the government itself refuses to tell them the truth with a full disclosure. Anybody goes to the CMHC website right now, Jim? What I just told you is not on there. There is not even a calculator sitting there. Oh, this is how it works. This is what you're going to effectively pay doesn't appear. The words don't appear. This is no different than mortgage default insurance. CMHC has never done anything to assist first-time buyers to to, to uh, navigate mortgage default insurance. And there are many ways that you can navigate it. The price of, of property that you're buying, the, how you structure your down payment, where, you're bor- where you can borrow your down payment fund, funds from. Uh, wh- where is the price breakdown on the mortgage insurance? In other words, at the higher of your down payment, up to 20%, the lower the, uh, the, the am- amount of mortgage default insurance that you have to pay. Some of the banks bury those, b- bury those fees in their mortgage rates. But again, that isn't disclosed to the public. And that's, it, that is what's so frustrating as we're sitting here talking to you today. And I, and I wasn't frustrated before I, before I called because Obviously, I'm watching the Raptors uh, celebration here on tel- on television. Uh, you know, we've, we've I guess not television on your computer monitors, but this is a scam. This is there, there are two options: either the government is clueless, or they are scamming you. There are only two options here. This this is simply further fuels the false narrative about housing markets that prevents proactive strategies and solutions from coming. This is no different than the BS report from Generation Squeeze that tell millennials you're going to have to save for a hundred thousand hundred thousand years to come up your debt with your down payment if you want to buy a house in Vancouver. It's ludicrous. People save for the down payment the same way that their parents save for the down payment. When you first get married or when you're first young, you live in the basement of your parents' house rent-free and you save that money to go out and buy your house. If you think that you want to go rent a house, buy a fancy car, pay off your student debt, all the while, and save for a down payment, well, no, that's never going to happen. That's impossible. It never has happened. Telling people the truth up front, look, folks, if you want to buy a home, a brand new home, we'll use this example, and, and access the 10% available from CMHC to acquire a property and not pay mortgage interest over 25 years on that, that 10% portion, this is what it's going to cost you 25 years from now. Why that's important is because one of the benefits of the program that is never going to be discussed is the ability to fill up your TFSA if you stay within financial constraints built into the program. If you take advantage of the TFSA, then all of a sudden 
which you have to pay CMHC 20 years from now, it's not going to matter. But if you don't structure your home ownership situation to take advantage of that, op- that, that opportunity, and instead you just go blindly into the process, believing what CMHC, the banks, and realtors tell you, you're going to be lose net wealth over the next 25 years. And it's, 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 I'm really ashamed of CMHC and the, and the federal government, I'm sorry, even the federal government right now, that they have not simply caught out and said, look at folks, $10,000, we, if we lend you $10,000 under the program, you're going to have to pay $27,000. You're expect, we're expecting you're going to refund us $27,300 20 years from now. We want you to understand that's what we're expecting. That's the math behind the calculation. That's what historical real estate data shows us. That's how the housing stock is expected to evolve over the next 25 years. Now, if we hit a depression, a global depression, we have a world war, that's going to throw everything up in, uh, up in the air. Maybe we're, go- maybe CMHC would lose if something like that happened. But that hasn't happened in the last 40 years. We don't expect it's going to happen going forward. But at least here's the numbers that you have to work with. No, that didn't happen today. You had a bunch of politicians standing at a stage pretending this is going to improve affordability, which historical data shows it's just the opposite. If you give a reduction in the cost of carrying a home, that reduction is quickly uh, eaten up by higher home prices. Every all your listeners li- who are out in Vancouver in in uh, in uh, British Columbia who watched how that thirty seven thousand dollar first time buyer boost misled everyone for a whole year because it artificially inflated prices were was were making decisions based on government giving them bad information again. And it's no different than this scam from the CMHC and the current federal government called the First Time Home Buyer Incentive Program. We'll have more with Ross K. right after this. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Magnum Gold Corp, MGI and the TSX Venture Exchange. A 2015 drill program on the LH property intersected several high-grade gold intersections, including 11 meters of 20.66 grams per ton gold. Additional drill targets on the LH property have been identified by a 2018 drone airborne magnetic survey to further evaluate a peritite enriched gold bearing system. Please visit our website at magnumgoldcorp.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Last week, it was said that Canada home sales had gone up 6.7% year to year. The biggest jump since 2016 was at another one of those uh, fake stats. It was a fake stat based on a, fa- a fake calculation using bad data from the year before. That's what it was, Jim. You know, I, and you know, I'm sorry to be negative here on the show about uh, about this. You know, I, I prefer to talk about the wonders of home ownership, the wonderful way that you can build wealth just by taking a rational, data driven approach to, to buying, selling, and owning your home. So, where did they but, come up with this uh, supposed six point seven percent increase? Well, first of all, they use a seasonally adjusted number. So, by using a seasonally adjusted number. They get to claim that there was this, this gain. What they didn't tell anyone in the entire report, it has not been reported anywhere in the press as of today, that May of 2018 numbers were all revised. The Toronto Real Estate Board dropped, had to add 
568 sales till their May of 2018 numbers. Now understand, folks, when, when they use a seasonally adjusted number, that number that they create is based on recent, recent months of sales activity. And they put it into a, to a, to a, uh, a calculation that allows them to guess what, what's going to happen going forward. Well, since housing cycles don't follow a calendar year, you should never use seasonally adjusted data in the first place. But what happens when you miscount sales, then you get a false reading on the following month. Remember, Jim, last summer when all the all of the bank economists, it's still in all their reports, we're, we're, we're saying the Canadian housing market is stabilizing. We are getting stabilizing home sales. The Canadian housing market is finally starting to stabilize. Well, why did they get that number? Because... An, a couple of Ontario real estate boards underreported the number of sales that actually took place in May into a record amount. That caused, when the numbers were reported in the, in the next few months, to look, oh, wow, look at this. Sales now have jumped. No, they haven't jumped. You, that's, you're only saying that because that number back in May was underreported. So it made things look better than what they were. That's exactly what has happened again this year. You are not looking at trading day adjusted home sales. You are looking at stats from the Canadian Real Estate Association or other real estate boards. These are stats. These are not data points. You need a data point to create a seasonally adjusted number. If you had trading day adjusted data like we use, and if the real estate market worked on a calendar year, then you could fair and square create a seasonally adjusted number. But you can't because A, it doesn't follow the calendar year, and B, because you need trading day adjusted data. And if you don't know how to read MLS data and adjust for the irregularities in year over year comparisons of the same month, it's useless. One of the biggest thing, concerns we've always had here in the show, Jim, is what we've said the wor- one of the worst things to happen would be the public getting access to sold data. The reason, the only reason that we've said it is not because we don't think the public should have, should have access to what information is going on in the housing market. What we're saying is they, it's dangerous to give them information that is misinterpreted by everyone in Canada. You can't look at housing sales in May, unless you have counted all the sales that took place in May. The real estate boards didn't do that in 2018, and they didn't do that in 2019. They counted up to a certain hour of a certain day the sales that were being reported to them. That's why it's called transactions reported to the local MLS system uh, up to and including the last day of the month. That doesn't mean all the sales that took place that month were reported. And you just, everybody, every economist in Canada who made those foolish and outrageous stabilization market myth statements from last year have just been exposed as frauds because they had to go back in and correct the May numbers. But that factual change has not been reported in one newspaper in Canada. Not one major Canadian bank who issued an economic report based on the housing data has put put in a retraction. CMHC has not placed a retraction. They have not apologized. The federal government has not issued a retraction. Yet, if you go to the Toronto Real Estate Board report for May of 2019, on the very front page to the right where it shows sales charts for May of 2018 and May of 2019, there is a great big footnote that admits, it says, we've re- revised the sales downward fa- or upwards 568 last year. Meaning, June, July, August, September, October's seasonally adjusted numbers 
were fraudulent. So when you're reading the comments about the housing market uh, that appeared last week, all you have to do is take it in context of what we said here in House Street a year ago, where we warned you that the numbers were not true. What you're reading now is the exact same thing. If you are relying on real estate stats to make the largest single investment of your lifetime, commit your family to 25 years of mortgage payments. Maybe you want to start giving CMHC some extra money for the first time buyer incentive program too. Maybe you want to overpay for CMHC insurance. Maybe you want to give the bank a higher interest rate in your mortgage. Maybe you want to buy a house that's going to need more, more money in repairs than what your friend's going to, buy, going to have to spend in their house. Maybe when it's time for your kids to go to university, you don't have any money where your friend does because they didn't make all these mistakes over the next first 10 years of home ownership. What you, what you read yet last week in the paper from our perspective is fraudulent. If this was said about the stock market, there would be people up in charges right now. Only in the housing market because of the universal ignorance of how a housing market functions and because economists receive no post-secondary education in how a housing market functions. Is this allowed to happen? We'll have more with Ross K. right after this. I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Ross K. Ross, the increase in private lending seems to be drawing a correlation with money laundering. Do you see private lending as a way to launder money efficiently in Canada? No, no, no. Private lenders are not an efficient way to launder money, Jim. That's a that's a myth being perpetuated by those who are looking to capitalize on some finan- any kind of financial damage they can cause to the home selling infrastructure on a short term basis. The the private lenders are generally mom and pops who are lending out mortgage money. Now, it may be a group of mom and pops who get together and and uh, and uh, get their funds, you know. At, Combined and lend it out, but they're still just regular investors. They, their, 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 their purpose for doing this is not to do anything other than to get a better return on their money than they can with a bank. So money laundering via private lending, uh, is, is not a problem. Now, I'm not saying that someone could set up a system where they could fund, uh, property purchases hold mortgages to wash to wash cash. I'm not saying that that's not possible. That, that's certainly possible. What I'm saying is it is a false narrative to claim that this is impacting the housing market, that it, it, that it has anything to do with house price change. It has anything to do with changes in the housing market. It is a false narrative that prevents proactive solutions for the housing affordability issue to be resolved. It's no different than the reports that we saw come out from uh, where Andy Yan uh, last week once again was at it. Another academic at, a, at a, a British Columbia University spouting off about things he has no training, no skill, no understanding of what's going on. He made the claim about the the uh, rental market, um, condos being uh, being owned by as and, and rented out. Or as how, 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 how he liked to say it, it's they're being owned by, uh, someone who, who doesn't live in the unit. Okay. Well, what he didn't understand was the structure of the British Columbia housing market and more importantly, 
the greater Vancouver housing market is different than that in Toronto. If you drill into the numbers, you're going to see that there's basically the same number of investors purchasing real estate to rent out landlording in Toronto as there is in Vancouver. But you have to drill down and be looking at the data for how those two housing markets are structured. Mr. Yan failed to understand that there's a re- the reason why people are, are buying rental condos in Vancouver is because the property taxes are so low. The reason why they're not buying out in, uh, in uh, Surrey or Richmond Hill or Langley is because there is a cash incentive to buy a rental unit in Vancouver. The same way as in, in Toronto. When they, they say, oh, well, you look at the Toronto market, well, the Toronto market is structured totally differently. Toronto, first of all, includes Scarborough, which you, you're not adding, you're not counting a White Rock when you're looking at uh, Vancouver, but we're going to count Scarborough in Toronto. You're not looking at the, the percentage of single detached homes versus condos, which is totally different in these two small segments of their cities. In other words, the actual city of Toronto, excluding Scarborough, and the actual city of Vancouver. You're not talking about the difference in property taxes, which makes investing in these two different areas better than the perimeter uh, perimeter uh, markets. You're not looking at the age of the housing stock. Okay, the housing stock in Vancouver has gotten younger quicker than the housing stock in Toronto. That isn't taken into consideration. All of these things create a false story, a false narrative that, it, it is believed because it seems reasonable because of the universal ignorance that exists on how housing markets work and how the housing stock is built. It's it, The problem I have is these guys going around and pretending they know what they're talking about when every single point I just mentioned is never addressed. Why is it never addressed? Because they are not taught when they're getting their economics degree that that's how a housing market functions. So money laundering through private lending is not a problem. It certainly would happen as there are lawbreakers in every part of society who take advantage of the rules and regulations. But it is not that has no impact on the price of homes anywhere in Canada. Ross, you also have a comment about secret changes taking place on when housing market stats are released. What kind of an effect is that going to have on home buyers? Well, I'll tell you, Jim, everything we've talked about in this show is, is in the past a couple of years is, is coming home to roost. The Terranet National Bank House Price Index, which is a scam as, as, as a, the way that we view it, uh, and as I have communicated on the show before, the OSFI has warned Canadian banks against relying on the Terranet National Bank, HPI, to update their loan-to-value ratios in their shareholder reports. What has ha- is happening this week for the first time, and what has gone unreported anywhere in Canada, except right here on House Street right now, Terranet National Bank, Post Price Index, has revised their release date. They are revising their release date now to go after the Canadian Real Estate Association releases their monthly housing data. For the previous two years, Terranet National Bank wanted to beat Korea to the punch and grab news headlines. So they released their house price index one day, one day, before the Canadian Real Estate Association's press release date for their monthly housing data. This month, that Terranet National Bank still has not released. Korea released on Friday. Terranet still has not released. They're not going to release till the 19th. All of their release dates for the rest of the year now come after the Canadian Real Estate Association has released theirs. Why? Because the Canadian Real Estate Association did not tell the press that in May they rebased all their benchmark prices. They went back in 
and they changed all of the benchmark price uh, uh, measurements to facilitate a better message with the public. They also added, for the very first time in history, with yesterday, with uh, last Friday's release, a seasonally adjusted benchmark price. They have never released a seasonally adjusted benchmark price until this uh, last Friday. You have an aggregate of cover-up that is going on, and, and I, this is not a conspiracy theory. There is clearly they are worried about damages. The Canadian real estate is worried that the public is going to become aware that the benchmark price is a scam in a correcting housing market. You're seeing it out in British Columbia live right now with your Vancouver only supposedly off 8% when there's houses that are selling 40 and 50% off. You see it in in, uh, in uh, Toronto, Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Martin Newmarket, Oakville, Burlington, houses that were selling 30 and 40% off, but the benchmark price virtually is unchanged from peak. There is a, there is a, co- a, 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 a for whatever reason, it is secret that all these changes have taken place, yet they're recorded. You can go and find where the Canadian Real Estate Association admits they have rebased their benchmark price. You can see that they admit this is the first time they've ever released a seasonally adjusted benchmark, which is the most ludicrous uh, number I've ever heard. As as a well-known author calls it, a Franken number. This is the Franken number of all Franken numbers. Terranet National Bank has moved their release date now to after Korea. So now they get to see whatever Korea says, and they can be on message going forward to protect themselves. So what I'm telling the, telling your listeners is, is, is today, please, question every single housing stat you, you hear. Please. Do not believe anything that you read in the newspaper. Please. When people are keeping information secret and hidden from you, there is a reason for it. When they're changing their, their price metrics on the fly, there is a reason for it. If the reason is not you, the reason is for them to protect themselves. And then I also ask you, why has no one in the government told you that these changes have taken place and to be wary? Why has CMHC not come out and said, oh, that Terranet National Bank house price that we've included our, in, our, in our report charts, the Canadian MLS HBI, which we have uh, included in our, in our report chart, um, they, were, they were wrong last year, the numbers were all wrong. Um, they, they're, don't worry, they're fixing it. They're going to rebase it. They're going to make changes. Um, don't worry, Terranet now is going to, is releasing after the date so that they can go back and, and make sure that the, their numbers don't look so far out. Remember, Terranet just last year, oh, we're using the three month rolling average because it's smooth as out house price change. Well, their smoothing out is already taking place because there is, there, they report closed numbers, not sales numbers. They're always delayed. Then, they, then they they came up with a new a new shift in 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 their their communication methodology. They have on their website the myths about the housing stabilize market stabilizing from last year. They didn't do a retraction from the sales we talked about earlier in the show. These are hidden secret changes going on where they bury the press release about these changes, or they hide the footnotes to only be accessible by someone who knows where to look. These are facts. Call up any realtor and ask them if they rebase the MLS benchmark in your neighborhood. The realtor legally has to tell you that they've changed. If they not, if they don't tell you that, you can file charges with the provincial regulator. Internet National Bank, if you're a customer of National Bank, ask them why they have changed their release date to go after Korea now. 
after craving all of that those headlines, after trying to beat Korea to the punch, when the middle of a housing correction, you move your press release to after Korea. This is this is the as I have said earlier in the show and on lots of shows. This this is the biggest scam that I have you you can imagine. It is not allowed to happen in the smaller stock market, i.e., the housing market is way bigger than the stock market is. It isn't allowed in filings, regulatory filings, from any financial institution in Canada, only in the housing market, the place where Canadians sign up to pay a mortgage for the next 25 years is this nonsense allowed to happen. You need to get information clearly that is clearly exp- exp- explaining to you how the housing market is going, where the housing market is headed, what, your, what the ho- property you own or are looking at buying is worth, where it's going to be worth going forward. You need to know if you're getting a, do- a dollar's worth of house or you're getting 90 cents worth of house when you're spending a dollar. All of these sort of things are, are hidden for one to two years from public view by these organizations that are releasing this housing market data. It hides it for one to two years, hoping that things, everybody's going to forget what you were told a year or two years ago. You're watching it happen live right now in the month of June. You're watching it happen live. The addition of a seasonally adjusted benchmark price by Korea, rebasing of their benchmark prices, and Terranet National Bank, which is now releasing after uh, Korea. And I'll bet you they've also going to have a revision to their data when they release it on the 19th. Ross, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on, Jim. My guest has been home ownership consultant Ross K from the wealthy homeowner.ca. If you have any questions for Ross or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.